All right, welcome back everyone. This is Ebony, AKA Fit Mom Diva of Simplicity Host Style. And today we have Anastasia with us. How are you, Anastasia? I'm doing great, how are you? I am awesome, you guys. She <laughs> is taking time out of her day to talk to us. She just came off of a vacation from Mexico. Yes. <laughs> so she's still getting into the swing of things of being back home. and. I really do appreciate her time here. You guys that stick around to the end, you will have an opportunity to get a complimentary gift. So listen out for what she has to share with us today. So Anastasia, start off by telling us one motivational quote that really inspires and encourages you and gets you going. Okay. Um, it's by Marianne Williamson, and it's actually funny. I got it from Akila and the Bee. Um, it's called, um, it, it says this, our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. You were born to make manifest the glory of God within us. It is everyone, not just in some, in some of us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give it other people the permission to do the same. So yeah. That is beautiful. <laughs> and I remember seeing that movie. It was so pretty of a movie. And my, my children loved it as well. I think that's one of those movies that you can watch over and over again. Oh I can't God, say yeah. that. I can't say that for every movie. Some movies are good, but I don't necessarily want to watch it again. But that's one of those that you can watch over and over again and gain inspiration from it. That yes. um, that quote puts me in mind of you're around certain people and you mm -hmm. just feel really good around these people. Mm -hmm. And then you're around other people and they drain your energy. <laughs> and yes. I, I often find that people say, you know, you should gravitate toward those people that are positive mm -hmm. but at the same time we have to understand that positive people don't always have positive days and positive moods <laughs> you know it's yeah. not always unicorns and rainbows right mm -hmm. tell us about a time in your life where you perhaps didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel and you even had to overcome some obstacles but you were able to see yourself through it by keeping your eye on the prize well, I can think about um, probably about a year ago, um, probably actually a year and a half ago now. Um, I uh, was just starting college and I was feeling really just out of place, out of my element, didn't know what was going on, um, didn't know who I want to be at this point in time. Um, and I just remember just being afraid of being, um, not being the right person or the best person um, and not being good enough, um, honestly. Um, and I just, I remember not being able, being um, overwhelmed basically by things from my past coming up. Um, you know, I struggle with mental illness, um, depression, anxiety, and not actually putting a name to those things. I came from a family that um, wasn't really, you know, into that, they were more of a, a pray it away kind of people. And um, I um, actually put a name to it. I started going to therapy, but for a while I felt honestly alone. I felt like no one understood me. I felt like I didn't have a support. Um, I didn't, I really couldn't, you know, my family. Um, I just got to college, so I knew no one in the state that I was in. So uh, I just really felt just alone um but i think what brought me kind of back to um just being with god is just um i start to surround myself with people who kind of understood where i was coming from and were okay with the person that i was then you know and who i am now still growing still learning still pushing past all the brokenness um I've just been learning to surround myself with those people and try and take little moments to just be with God, you know? So it's really, it's really helped, especially praying, especially just stepping out of my comfort zone has been a big thing for me. Um, and just being okay with not being okay all the time. So. Yeah. And I think that 
too oftentimes we don't necessarily have the support that we need because people are busy, busy, busy <laughs> in their yeah. own world. And a lot of times they have their own problems. And when they don't know you very well, they're not necessarily taking time out of their own world to give support to you. And I think that that's sometimes an issue as well when we finally make up our mind that we want to do better. We have these goals and we have these dreams that we want to bring to life, but we still don't have those people around us. <laughs> you know, because sometimes we can turn people off when we're in a state of misery, but at the same time, we can also turn people off when, when we're in our happiest state because people just tend to get busy with their own thing. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest to those people that really want to get their idea off the ground? They want to live in their life purpose. They want to be about something. Maybe they have identified some people even online that are doing exactly what they see themselves doing by being impactful toward humanity, but they haven't necessarily found the support circle that they need. What are some ideas? And suggestions that they could use to begin to identify those people because I know you said just a minute ago that that's what helped you you began to surround yourself with people that were supportive um I honestly I think the first step is just to look back uh, just take a step back and really look at who's around you and look at if these people want to be if you are these are the people that you want with you when you succeed when you do well if these are the people that are okay with you not being at your best or you know um not being at a hundred percent all the time um and as far as um stepping into your purpose i think um the most important thing is just to be okay with being vulnerable mm -hmm. i think so many times we just we're so afraid and we clench up and we you know push others away and we end up isolating ourselves, not even knowing. Um, and we don't give people a chance to really help. You know, it's kind of hard right. to ask for help and not receive help, which was my issue. <laughs> right. Times. Um, but I think that's a really, really big step. It's just to, just to open yourself up, you know, step away from um, what you think you want, what you think you need, and even the negativity around you and just, look at okay is this going to impact my life positively and if it's not then just just let it go you know right right and sometimes you only need a couple of people in your circle you know if you have those one or two genuine people that really want to see you succeed and really want to be there for you that's all you need <laughs> i've heard people say things like i don't have any friends and they do have friends, but they're expecting to have a larger circle. When in all actuality, you can really nourish the relationship that you have with those couple of people. And you, if you, if you communicate openly, many times they're able to help you more than the entourage that then goes and spreads your business. <laughs> you know? That's very true. <laughs> So sometimes um, having that smaller, closer knit community mm -hmm. is more impactful for you and your well-being than having that entourage that you're looking for, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think um, I think also that entourage, um, it actually can hurt you more than help you sometimes um, because you're not getting um, like focused advice. Right. Um, I think when you're not intentional about the people that you surround yourself with, you can end up being kind of confused and frustrated right. um i know like i had that issue i was always focused on just i'm so insecure you know um that i just want everyone ar around me that i could get you know um right just people to kind of like help you know just just you know kind of fill that hole that i had you know um not feeling like you had family support can be the most painful thing that i'm still dealing with to this day and sometimes you can end up pulling the wrong people in to your circle. Um, and I think that, I, I think less in this case is definitely more. Um, yes. For me, I, when I started being intentional about who I kept around me, that's really, really what helped. Um, the, I actually, it might sound kind of weird, but I actually, um, certain friends would be kind of for certain reasons kind of thing. 
Um, I mean, there's a, there's a quote I heard one time. It was something about, you know, you have certain friends for certain seasons and certain reasons in your life. And when I started looking at it that way, um, I was like, man, this helps, you know, because it started, it helped me to weed out the people that weren't, you know, benefiting me at all, you know? Right. So, I mean, some friends are just there to take up space, honestly. Yeah. Like my contact list is, ridiculously long of like full of people I haven't talked to in a while so yeah yeah and then you have those people that you can go and have fun with you know go and do activities with and then you have your really close people that you know will always be there for you whether you're hanging out at a fun activity or not they're always going to be there and some of them they don't even require you to hang out with some elaborate activity <laughs> you know oh my gosh these are my favorite friends <laughs> yes yes keeping it simple <laughs> Yes. What was your intention behind your social media presence? Because you come across as someone that is very passionate about living life. And of course, you haven't arrived <laughs> to where you would love to be. You're still on a journey to that. But you, you come across as someone that's very passionate and genuine for humanity. So what was your intention behind putting yourself out there on social media? Man, um, I can honestly say just thinking about what I needed, um, you know, when I was at that really hard spot and I'm still, I'm honestly still kind of working my way through it. I'm definitely not out of it, out of the woods yet, you know, um, just thinking about, you know, like a younger version of me, like who can I be for that person? You know, mm -hmm. if I was going to per se be my friend in the past, you know, what would I need? And right. when I started to think like that, um, I was like, wow, you know, there are so many women, so many girls that I can imagine feel that same exact way, you know, that right. they don't have the support they need, that they don't, um, they don't feel comfortable being themselves. They don't even really know who they are yet. Um, right. And there's really no like place for them to pull from. Right. And I was like, okay, um, social media, I love social media. And I was just so tired of seeing um, just all this negative stuff on social media and how people would get angry and argue over things that they saw on social media. And, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that what you look at and what you listen to is what you put in your spirit, you know? Right. And I was like, okay, I changed the music I listened to, you know, I'm changing kind of the things I watch on TV, but I didn't think about what I was doing for most of my day, which was <laughs> scrolling through Instagram, through Facebook. And I'm like, man, what if this platform was used for something like better, you know, something, right. you know, where people really felt like, they were a part of something. I mean, you're looking, you're like, how many likes am I getting? You know, how many followers, you know, what kind of comments and stuff. And I'm like, what if there was like a place where women could go and they could just, every time they pulled up their Instagram account, they just see just love all the time, you know? Right. And it actually, I mean, people don't like, people don't under, like people underestimate, you know, how valuable social media is and how it actually impacts you on a different level you know mm -hmm. um even though you're looking at a screen it can really impact you like inside too right you know? so i mean that's really kind of what i was thinking about i was like okay i just want to put out you know love and transparency and you know a place where women can feel and girls can feel supported you know right so. yeah and one thing that is for sure is if you don't have a strong bond with people that are close to you, that really value you as a person and see you as worthy and there to really help you, not enable you, but really help you, you will get sucked into the, I have all of these Facebook friends or all of these Instagram friends and these are my people that I see every day online, but when I have a real issue, then there's nobody around. I'm lonely. <laughs> you know? Like, well, who are my real friends, you know? 
Mm -hmm. I think that that you're right. You have to look at what you're listening to, what you're looking at on TV, and then again, what you're browsing on social media. At times, I will deliberately detox my friend list where I'm left with people that I really want to see their content. I feel Mm -hmm. like if you're not adding value to my life, and we don't talk regularly. You never <laughs> comment on my stuff. You never like my stuff. Why are you in my space? <laughs> you know, because when I log on to social media, I want that to be a positive influence on my development. You know, so I think that being very careful about about what we use social media for is mm-hmm. is very important because we're spending a lot of time there these days. I mean, the the fact of the matter is. We don't necessarily live in communities with our family and friends at all times. People are very transient. They move across country. They move across Mm -hmm. the state. And you're just not as close to these people. So it's an excellent way to keep in contact with those individuals. But at the very same time, you have to know who to include in that circle. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I am not one that needs to have 5,000 people following my Facebook page. If I have 500 and they're the right 500 people that I really care about and that we have a reciprocal relationship where we can learn from each other, that means more to me than the vanity numbers, to be quite frank. (laughs) I don't see the point of having 5,000 people on my page just because the the platform allows for that, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. (laughs) Tell us how you would approach your teenage years because you are... In college now, but you said that you had a difficult time during your teenage years, and you really want to speak to your younger self. So, how would you approach your teenage years now, having known that it can be better for you? I honestly, uh, man, I would. I think I would. I wouldn't be so hard on myself, you know. Um, Gosh, it like, I think just, I'm so hard on myself, you know, and I think a lot of women can relate to that. Um, it's really, it, I'm, I'm actually thinking about like, um, saying now that, you know, I'm recovering from perfectionism because it's like, um, you try to get everything right. You know, um, uh, my grandma always told me, you know, whatever you do, do your best, you know, and, um, I think from being at home and being in a hypercritical environment, um, it just, I think I internalized a lot of that stuff and Mm -hmm. I ended up pushing myself so hard and so fast. I I mean, I graduated from high school early um, and I'm, I'm proud of that, but I feel like along the way I kind of got lost. You know, I never really got to experience life and experience, Mm -hmm. you know, the good parts about it. Um, I think if I were to go back, I would just focus on being present, I think, um, and being kind to myself. (laughs) Yeah, and I think that that could be very difficult to embrace the present tense. I know with myself, at times I'm busy thinking about the, the goal that I have in front of me, so I'm taking the implementation steps for that goal, but in the process, I'm not necessarily present as to what is going on around me right now. I'm not experience, experiencing necessarily all the sights and sounds and, and feelings of what's occurring right now. I'm still focused on that end goal. Okay, now I need to do this. And then later today, I need to do this because I'm, I'm focused on moving forward, which is not a bad thing. But when you're when you're a driven individual in that way, you 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 want to take action steps. You still have to sit back and say, okay, it's okay to just sit here and bask in this moment. <laughs> yes. you know? So it's a very delicate balance when you're someone that does want to achieve your dreams, especially when you know what that dream and what that vision is. It's different when you have no idea. You can enjoy it. <laughs> it's easier when you can sit back and enjoy life because you're. You're not moving to anything, you know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it's a very, very, very delicate balance of remaining present and still being action and future oriented. Yeah, I've definitely been super ambitious. And I think um, 
it's, it's really good, but also too much of anything, can, right. any good thing can be a bad thing. And so I'm constantly focused on tomorrow that I completely just blank out in the present. You know, I'm, I'm, I realize I look back and I'm looking at days that I didn't really appreciate and value because I was so focused on moving to the next thing and, you know, trying to do my best for that and plan three weeks ahead for this event or for things that I had going on that I just completely just missed out. So being present, yes. I, yeah. I think, I think. How would you suggest that people live in the present moment? Because what you're saying is a wonderful concept, but what is one step that people can make to identify how to live in that present state? Um, for me, I struggle definitely with always feeling the sense of urgency and I'm always running out of time. Um, I'm always trying to beat the clock. And when I look at it, and when I sit down and look at it um, for what it is, I, I just ask myself, Anna, what are you rushing for? You know, like, what is, what is this clock you're trying to beat? You know, what are, who are you racing? You know, right. and most, most times it's myself, you know. Um, I think the first step for that is just to identify, you know, um, who, who you're working so hard for. You right. know, um, who are you trying to beat? You know, who are you trying to impress or do better than? You know, who are you right. competing against? Because a lot of the times when we're rushing like that, it's 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 kind of like a competition, and you're trying to be first. But right. when you look around, no one's racing you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're the only one out there. <laughs> That so. is so true. <laughs> and you said it right. You're really racing yourself and where you feel like you need to be. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, most people really are thinking about themselves. They're not really thinking about you for the majority part of the day anyway. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's very so true. It, it, it's like just sit still and chill mm -hmm. out for a second because nobody cares. <laughs> care about if you met your goal five seconds from now or five days from now because they're not thinking about your goal they're thinking about their own goal yeah <laughs> oh. and I think just being okay with that is yeah. just the hardest but most like the best thing that you can do what I'm working on is just sitting back and being okay with the fact that you know I just did this today you know right. Um, of course, now if you have certain deadlines to meet, you know, then of course, but um, if there aren't any deadlines involved and you know what I mean, um, and you have a little wiggle room, just being okay with, you know, just being okay with what you did and just being satisfied, you know, and leaving the rest of the day to really just be present and do something you wouldn't normally do. Yes, I love that. <laughs> what you like to do in your spare time. I know that travel is a big thing. So tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Oh, I love to travel. Oh my gosh. Um, I feel like it's my secret addiction. <laughs> and <laughs> I feel like I just have the travel bug. I mean, I could just get up and leave any single time. Um, I love it. I love seeing the world. Um, and I'm definitely more of a culture girl. I love yeah. just seeing the culture you know I'm not I'm there's nothing wrong with staying you know in um a safe you know like hotel resort um definitely it is a good bang for your buck but I personally love interacting with people um yeah. just the culture the food oh my gosh the food <laughs> for sure. but um yeah I just I love everything about it honestly Yes, I am very much the same way. I could definitely go and sit on a resort, but really, I'm not going to another country or even another <laughs> state to just sit on a resort. Yeah. <laughs> I could do that here locally just fine. Yeah. And I think that the best thing that a person can do for themselves is to get out there and experience what it's like to meet other people and get a different perspective on how life can be for mm -hmm. other people. It begins to put things into perspective in your own life. And then you begin to appreciate more of what you have sometimes, especially when you travel overseas and go to other countries and you see yes. how they may not have as much. But really, 
it's awesome how I'll see some of these people. I went to Bali one year and mm -hmm. I saw how some of the people didn't really have a whole lot in terms of luxurious items, like what we would have here in the U.S., but they were so happy. Yes. <laughs> there was a sense of community and there was mm -hmm. a sense of I'm excited to be with my kin that they didn't really need these luxurious things. So I think that sometimes we're chasing these luxury items and in all actuality, we just need to enjoy the people and the things that we do have. Being in that state of gratitude, hmm. I, uh, I highly recommend it for, for anyone that's looking to gain a better sense of the world while also feeding their own selves and becoming more self-aware. Bali sounds beautiful. I would definitely. Yes, it is so <laughs> beautiful. It really is. And when I went, I felt like when I came back, like I had just <laughs> left heaven and went to hell. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the difference between the 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 way that the people were in that environment and coming mm -hmm. back here to the U.S. where everything is stressed out, chaotic, and not to say it's like that everywhere, but. Yeah. I just noticed the the difference. I really, I really did. And um, I think that once we begin to identify that life can be simpler, which is one of the reasons why I mm -hmm. created Simplicity Health Style, because I'm all about simplicity and slowing down and just really enjoying life. Not trying to catch up, but really enjoying life. So when we were talking a minute ago about staying in the present moment, I believe that that is so much more impactful to our fulfillment and our meaning in life than always being in this rat race, <laughs> you know? Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I just, yeah. Being present is, it's hard to honestly, I mean, in this world, everyone's telling you like, keep going, you know, you have to be the first one, you know, you have to be the first one up and the last one to sleep, you know, keep grinding and you're going to get what you need. Um, and I think that is true. Um, I do believe in hard work, but um, I feel like, like, like I said, anything that's good, that's too much of, can become a bad thing. And what's the point of working so hard if you can't enjoy anything? Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. If you're working, grinding all the time, and you can't really enjoy what you're working and grinding for, how fulfilling is that? And if that's fulfilling to you, then so be it. <laughs> Yeah. But then don't complain that you don't have time to yourself. <laughs> that's, exactly. That's exactly. where it becomes an issue. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm with you. <laughs> Tell us how people can connect with you and see more of your journey. Those of you that are listening, she has some awesome, awesome adventures that I'm sure that she's <laughs> going to put out there for you to enjoy and travel along with her. How can people connect with you? I'm gonna include all your info in the description box, but if you could just real quickly state your Instagram handle so that people can follow you. Okay, thank you. Um, it's actually Anastasia Courier. Um, it's A-N-A-S-T-A-S-I-A-T-U-R-R-I-E-R. -R -E <laughs> it's my full, just regular name, um, but I um, currently run Her Faith Inspired, and it's basically just a platform for women to feel connected and feel supported. I mean, I think that it, that's the best thing that we can do for each other right now, you know, um, especially on social media. And I'm trying to work on making my um, feed a little bit more relatable. Like I said, I'm a recovering perfectionist and I'm like, I have to get the perfect feed. I have to make it aesthetic. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, it's okay if some of the colors are off, you know, I'm, I'm like trying to work with that. But um, yes, I'm definitely trying to be on there more often and connect with you guys more often. So thank you. And for those of you that don't have a strong online support system, you're also welcome to join my Nutrition for Busy Women Facebook group. And that link will also be in the description box. We talk about nutrition from a food consumption standpoint, but we also are talking about nutrition for our mind, body, and soul. So when you're thinking of how do I feed myself with all this positivity that Anastasia referred to, think about also hanging around purpose-driven women. And on those days where you are not at your best, you will not stay down for long if you surround yourself with those people that are about life and speaking life. 
So I encourage you to join us. And for those of you that do join, you will have an opportunity to get a complimentary gift that's also gonna help you with identifying your career purpose and your life purpose as well. Anastasia, do you have any closing remarks for us? Just, um, just stay, be yourself. Be happy with being you and being in the moment. And like you said, just, just be present, you know. Feed yourself with positivity, surround yourself with positive people, it will definitely make your life a whole lot better. Thank you. So be yourself, be present, and fill your life with positivity. And for those of you that want to share your story, this could be your challenges, this can be your greatest successes, whatever you feel would be impactful to women across the world, please reach out to me. I would love to interview you as well because I believe strongly in the sense of community amongst women and we can truly learn from each other's experiences so that we don't have to feel like we are all alone, like we're doing it by ourselves. You guys have an awesome rest of the day wherever you are in the world and be sure to share this content out to your friends and family that can benefit. And I look forward to talking to you in our next episode. Talk to you guys soon.